Hello, I'm Bruce Shaney, and today we're going to take a look at this object that's stuck on the top of my head. We've had these in my classroom for years and years. We call them Tweety Boppers, and one suggested use for it is to demonstrate rotational inertia. In this case, an object at rest is going to remain at rest. Now, there's very little friction between my head and the Tweety Bopper, so it stays stationary. What about if we put it into motion? Well, an object in motion is going to stay in motion unless the force acts on it. Uh, once again, very little friction between my head and the Tweety Bopper. In fact, I can even turn in the opposite direction, and it really has no effect on it. Of course, your results may depend on how much hair you have. Now, when we're looking at rotational inertia, it actually depends on two factors. Uh, for example, we have golf balls a certain distance away from the center of rotation, and it takes a certain amount of effort to turn that. If I were to try this with ping pong balls, this is a lot easier to turn simply because they have less mass. The second factor it depends on is the distance the balls are away from the center. If I move them close, it's much easier to turn. With each twist of my fingers, the golf balls are only moving a very short distance. So with our Tweety Boppers, it should make a difference depending on how much mass we have at the bottom and how far that mass is away from the center of rotation. Now let's take a look at construction. Our wire is going to be from coat hangers, and here's some different sets of materials that we can use for the mass. I'll start by cutting off the top end of the coat hanger. Next I'll straighten it out, find the center, and that's where I'm going to put my first bend. So now as I hold this end firmly in my hand, I'll add the next two bends, which are kind of semicircular. With a straight bend at the bottom, I can drill a hole and attach a golf ball to it. That bend could also be used to support a battery as the mass. If you're using wooden blocks, you can make them fancier by adding somebody's face to it. Here's another possibility. Make them look like airplanes. Way I can pretend I'm King Kong. <laughs> While this version was made out of wood, I've also made smaller versions out of cardboard and then attached small weights to the bottom. Here's another version made out of cardboard. Except this one sits on a wired loop and will rotate as it works its way down. You could even make one that's battery powered. Finally, here's one last idea. These loops work well for the balls of clay. Now, before I add mass to it, let's just take a look at the support by itself. I can find the wire's center of gravity by balancing it sideways. Its approximate position would be in the middle of this red piece of tape. If I try and support it this close to the center of gravity, it just falls over. I'll add some additional mass to it with these clay balls, and then we'll try it again. Now it's become much more stable because we're supporting it above its center of gravity. So adding the mass has shifted the center of gravity down to about here, well below where I'm supporting it. This is the idea behind many balancing toys. We can try all sorts of changes by bending the wire. Now the center of gravity is right about here. You can also try some shapes that are asymmetrical. So we can use these as an example of rotational inertia, where they can help explain center of gravity and why things bounce. But my favorite use is they demonstrate various types of harmonic motion. We can start with a simple harmonic motion. Here we see it just rocking back and forth. Same type of movement. Why is this one going faster? 
Next, we can get that same movement while it's rotating. Here's another simple harmonic motion. In this case, it's due to the wire flexing as a spring. These ping pong balls look like they've had too much caffeine. Different amounts of mass, different distances away from the center. Moving into compound oscillations, here we see more than one harmonic at the same time. The springs can also be adjusted so that when you push them in and release them, the movement changes from an in and out motion to a rocking back and forth motion and then back again. You can see the same type of behavior in coupled pendulums. This transfer of energy from one place to another is called resonance, and it occurs quite often in all sorts of energy applications. Now, as long as we don't overload the spring with too much energy, its pattern of movements are very predictable. If more energy is added, it can become quite chaotic. Well, as you can see, it's very simple, but it has some fascinating movements to it. If you're a classroom teacher, make some of these that I can guarantee students will want to investigate it. Anyway, I'd like to thank you for watching and come back and see us again. Okay, bye.